What's up guys? Um, Devin Davis here. Just thought I'd do a little Supercross preview show. I did one two years ago, but I didn't do one last year. And upon request, I was asked to do it again this year, and I put together a small list of riders. And let's just hop right into it. Alright, so the 450 title contenders, or the favorites to win the title. Uh, top of the list has to be defending champion Jack Haley on the Jack Daniels Racing Honda. Uh, like I said, he's the defending champ. Uh, in 2018, he won the East Supercross title, and he has six Premier Class wins. I think he's probably coming into the 450 season in the best form, and in my opinion, the favorite to defend the title. Next up is Jeremy Seabolt. He finished second overall last year and has, out of anyone racing in the field this year, he has the most wins with 16. He's a two-time West Coast Supercross champion and one of the most dominant Supercross riders that we've ever seen in the game. Um, he's definitely the favorite to beat Haley if he's there all 17 rounds and, you know, doing his best. If Jeremy Smith races, he's also someone to look out for. He finished third overall last year. He's a two-time Supercross champion in the 250 class, and he has 14 Premier Class wins. Um, next up, we have Alexis Leclerc, who's going to be on the Husqvarna. Um, fifth overall last year, had a tough season. Um... Former 450 Supercross champion, six Premier Class wins, uh, and I think anyone who knows Leclerc knows that he's probably going to be the fastest guy in the field. But that's kind of uh, changed over the last, you know, over the last season. It seems like Leclerc's lost his just raw speed compared to some of the other riders, and they'll be interested to see if he's still motivated to keep that speed. All right, next up, and the last rider in this category is Colton Mitchell. He had some computer problems last year, but he finished runner-up to Leclerc in 2018, and surprisingly he only has one Premier Class win, but I think anyone who knows um, Colton knows that he's fast enough to hang with anyone in the game, and to not be surprised if you look at A1 and he's checked out with a 10 second lead. Alright, the next category is what I like to call the Who's Next, because the top five guys that I just listed are proven title contenders, proven winners, and you know they're going to be up there. So the first rider in this category is Walter Gebhardt on the system decal machine. He finished 7th overall last year and got one win, but more importantly he went on to win the 250 outdoor title and he's been ripping in the offseason. Um, you could check out his stream at twitch.tv slash wallman I believe it is. If, if not then I'll uh, correct that in the description below but definitely worth a watch uh, next up is Adam Holm I think everyone here knows who Adam Holm is he got fourth in points last year he only has one premier class win and something that concerns me about his chances is the decision to switch to first person after riding in third person for so long uh, I mean I'm sure he could still run up front and win races but It'll be a really interesting to see how he adapts to that as the year goes on and to see if as time goes on, if he gets better and starts to, you know, win races later in the year. All right, next up is Tyler Lang on the MV Films ride. He finished third overall in the 250 East Championship and he's the 250 EU East Supercross Champion. Um, moving up to the 450 class after getting pointed out and seems like he's one of those riders that is probably smoother on a 450 than a 250 and I think that could really help him and you should check out his uh the replica setup on the 14 Honda little Cole Sealy uh style ride all right next up is Craig Leak always one of the fastest 250 riders with six 250 wins he was second in points to Craig Richards last year and he should be one of the faster guys um in this category just on raw speed Always interesting to see how he does when it comes to consistency, because that seems to be his kryptonite. But he'll for sure be quick. Alright, next up is Sean Klein, who's going to be on the Evergood ride. Not sure how much he's been playing this offseason. He did get pointed out, and I'm not even sure if he's going to be racing. But, man, every time he races a 450, like on the opposite coast of the class he's racing, he's always been consistent, he's always been fast. Only got 252, 250 class wins. But, man, he was always super consistent and fast, and I think he's better suited on a 450.
The next category is the who else to look out for. And to be honest, there's so many fast riders in the 450 class in this game that it's hard to just pick, you know, a certain handful of riders. But I was able to get five for the favorites, five for the last category, and five for this one. So the first rider is Dennis Fjellberg, who's on the MV Films ride. He has three Premier Class wins, and he's always super fast, always stylish, and I mean, I just don't know how many races he's going to be doing because he does live in uh, Norway, I believe, and, you know, he's racing at like 3 a.m. Our next up is going to be the owner of RF now, or maybe not the owner, I don't know what his official title is, maybe race director, Jeremy Kohenauer. He finished sixth overall last year. He's never gotten a win, but he's got I know he's gotten some triple crown wins, a lot of heat race wins. And he's just always super fast, consistent, and just like a solid, like I, I kinda think of him as like a Brayton kind of rider. Alright, next up is Race Carlin, who's also on an MV Films ride. Ninth overall last year. I don't know if he's doing the full year, because I know he's pretty busy with school. But he's just always consistent, always fast, and always, I guess, someone to look out for. Alright, next up is Chase Blakely on the BBC ride. He got 4th overall in the 2D West uh, Coast Series last year, and he got 1 win. I don't think he's going to be dropping down this year. I think he's moving back up to 450s full-time. And if so, he's going to be always in the top 10, always battling for, you know, top 5s. Just ripping. And he has the uh, El Hombre replica set up, which is pretty cool. Alright, and the last rider is Jeremy Shipley. He has 8 Premier Class wins, 12th in points last year, but don't let that fool you. He's definitely quick enough to be up there in the favorites category. I just don't know where his motivation is at. He's been playing this game for so long, and he's just... Oh, it seems like he's always in contention for wins, at least at some point in the year. So look out for him to get in there and shake things up. Oh, and you thought I was going to leave out the wild card, Rush Chapman. He's coming back. Dominated. Back when I did the first preview show, I said, like, oh, I think he could get it done. Maybe he'll get a few wins. He went on to get, like, a perfect season just shredding. I think he even did the 450 class for a couple rounds, got two wins. Man. It's really going to be interesting to see if he races the full year and if he could stay out of trouble. Because he's literally the J-Law of MX Simulator at this point. So definitely look out for Rush. He's the wild card in my opinion. If he races all 17 rounds, I think he has the ability to just dominate. But that's the big question. Like, Will he even show up for A1? We'll see. Alright, let's hop into the 250 class. So... I just kind of briefly want to touch on the champions. West Coast champion from last year, Craig Richards, on the Tagger Designs Honda. Defending West Coast champion has three wins. I heard he's only doing Anaheim 1. Uh, we'll see if he does anything more than that, but knowing those Aussies, it, it seems right that he'll only show up for A1. I mean, it seems like riders lose motivation once they finally win a championship on this game, especially if they've been racing for a long time, and understandably so because it it requires a lot of practice and hard work to get there. So, you know, I, I guess he just wants to run the number one plate, which I don't blame him. Uh, and then the East Coast champion is Isaiah Dickerson on the MV Films ride. Uh, he had five wins last year, honestly kind of dominated East Coast, and he'll be defending that title. And, man, if he's, if he's motivated, like I just talked about, if he still has that motivation to defend his title then I, I think he could join uh, Jeremy Smith and I believe Russ Chapman, or not Russ Chapman, Jeremy Siebel is the only two riders to, you know, maybe not defend, but win a 2VD class two years consecutively. Alright, so the favorites. Um, the first rider I'm going to mention for this is Logan Leitzel on the Mad Cape ride. He finished second overall in the 2VD East Championship in the NA and the EU Series, and he has one win. Um, he's not going to even be on his computer until mid-January, I believe, or early February. But I think he'll be ready to rip when it comes down to uh, the first East Coast round and be in contention for the title. Next up is another MV Films rider. Man, this is a recurring thing with these MV Films riders. Uh, Colby Eglin, he finished fourth in the 2 the East Championship last year with one win. But 
I think this year he's going to really step it up and start battling with these guys that have been proven to be title contenders. Our next up is Brandon Carter, who's fresh off of a, you know, FAMMX Ball Cup King of Supercross Championship. You know, beating the likes of Jack Haley, Walter Gebhardt, you know, all these, you know, Chase Blakely, proven 450 contenders. Um, he broke through and got his first win ever last year, but man, he's been going so fast in the offseason. It seems like he's really matured to the point where he can be comfortable up front. And that's a scary thought for anyone on the West Coast. And the last rider in this category is Andrew Massart, who fit, even though finished wet fifth in the West Coast Championship last year, he had two wins and he won the West Coast Supercross Championship in the EU series. So I definitely think that Massart can step up and contend for a championship in the NA series. Alright, the next category is I have four riders listed under spoilers. And the reason why they're under spoilers is because they're either not the most consistent or maybe they're not racing the entire year. And the first rider is Ben Siebert from Great Britain. Uh, he's on the Rockstar Energy Husqvarna. He finished third in the West EU series last year. And he was always fast in the NA series. I believe he led most of the main event at Anaheim 1. So definitely look out for Ben. Also, Jonathan Hughes, who finished third in the 250 West Championship last year with a win. Um, man, Jonathan Hughes, I haven't heard much of him in this offseason, and I'm not even sure how much he raced outdoors, but definitely a fast 250 rider and should be able to mix up with anyone that I've listed prior. The, lot, or the next rider is Daniel Mills on the Jack Daniels Racing Ride. Finished eighth in the 250 East Coast last year. He's definitely an OG. He's been around for a long time. I think his UID is in the teens. And he has one win, which was, I remember, Daytona a few years back. But he's someone that could always be a spoiler. He's always fast, and he gets great starts. That's kind of his uh, forte. He gets really good starts. And if he's playing a lot, and if he's consistent, he can spoil a lot of these guys you know, that I listed before this. And the last rider in this category is Bryce Whelan on the BPC ride. He has two 250 class wins. I believe he has a few more 450 wins. He's just one of the fastest guys. It's just that he never seems to put it together for a full season. And if he... Man, if he does, he's he should be in the favorites category. And originally I had him there. But I just don't know how many races he's going to do. Um, so that's why he's in the spoilers category. I would not be surprised if he went out. I believe he's racing East Coast, so I wouldn't be surprised if he wins the opener, but we'll see. And the next list is I have about 10 riders that I have that are trying to, riders trying to break into that top 5, or maybe even top 10. A lot of these guys, you know, have gotten top 10s before, maybe not top 5s. And, you know, maybe this year they're trying to get to that next level, because it seems like there's a gap from the riders that are winning and on the podium to the guys that are like 5th to 10th. So these are maybe these riders trying to get into that next group. The first one is Dylan Copeland on the Tagger Designs Honda. He finished 5th in the 250 East Championship last year. And it was more off of a consistency rather than just being, you know, super fast. So I think if he improves on his speed and brings that consistency with him, he can maybe, you know, get in there and get some podiums, maybe a win. Next up is Jacob Hubbard. Uh, I don't know what team he's on, but you know he finished sixth in the to the East Championship last year. He's kind of an OG at this point in 250s, and I think he'll be up there in the top ten. Maybe we'll see him in the top five. All depends on how much he's playing. Next up is Hunter Porch, who's also on an MV Films Honda. Uh, seventh in the 250 West Championship last year. Remember he won some heat races. Really came alive in the GP series later in the summer, but I think Hunter is definitely fast enough to get in there and be in the top five. Next up is the MX Locker rider of Zoa Cross, ninth in the 250 East Championship last year. Really fast on a 250, and I think he sh should be looking for top fives um, this season. Alright, next up is Will Whiteley on the MV Films ride. 10th in the 250 West Championship last year. I'm not sure how much he's been riding, but if he's racing Supercross, then I, I would expect him to be in the top 10 and hoping to be in the top 5. 
Next rider is um, my teammate on Mad Cape, Luke Sullivan. He just won the Prince of Supercross Championship, and this will be his first year racing in the Pro Class in Supercross. And you always got to watch out for these young kids that get confidence this quickly after winning a title like that. Um, you know, he might come into, he's racing East Coast. He might struggle, but at the same time, he might bring that confidence of knowing he can win. Granted, it wasn't against all the top guys, but he might be able to bring that confidence over and not be scared of these guys and contend right away. Um, I see a lot of similarities with him that I did with Hunter Root when I was watching Hunter first play. Not to say that he's going to go on to be a Hunter Root, but he's definitely someone I think you should look out for on the East Coast. Alright, next up is Gonzo, Kevin Gonzalez on the MV Films ride. Uh, switching over to MV Films after riding for BPC all summer. You know, he struggled in Supercross last year, but he was pretty consistent. Um, or, excuse me, he was consistent the year prior, and then he came into last year really fast, but just seemed to struggle. I think this year, with the backing of a team like MV Films, he could really come into his own and honestly be top five in points at the end of the year, in my opinion. All right, I have one rider left to talk about, and it's Trent Adams on the Virot KTM team. He finished 14th in his rookie season last year, but he gets great starts. He's working on his consistency, and he's pretty damn fast. I think Trent Adams can be someone that you might not expect to be up there, but don't be surprised if it's you know coming towards the end of the year, and you're like, wow, this guy's been you know mixing up for top fives all year long. And I guess now I should talk about who I think is going to come out and win. Um, in the 450 class, there's a lot of really good guys that I think can contend for wins. Um, you know, Jeremy Shipley, Walter Gebhardt, Adam Holm, Tyler Lang, Jeremy Siebel, you know, all these guys, but it's so difficult to pick a champion. Um, to be honest, I'm going to go with Jeremy Siebel. I think he has the most wins in the class, and if he's motivated, he's going to be pissed that he finished second lap this past year. And I think this year he could finally get it done. Um, I don't know where Haley's motivation is at, but man, I think it's going to be a really fun season to see how those guys, you know, duke it out. And the problem with predicting the 250 class is you, you're never really sure who's going to race which coast on this game. It seems like you don't know until, you know, the day of the race. You know, some people even ride Anaheim one track and they decide they don't like the track and they'll pull their sign up. So, I'm going to have to go with Braden Carter. Uh, I think he'll be mature enough and have them. He'll have the most confidence after winning that off-season championship. And he's going to be the fastest 250 rider on the West Coast, at least. So I expect Braden to stay out of trouble, get good starts, and just be the fastest guy and get the most wins. And I think if he does have a blow-up round, as they call it, his wins will make up the points of everyone else's in inconsistencies. So I'm going for Braden to have a pretty dominant year. And then on the East Coast, and it's so difficult to call, I'm going to go with Colby Eaglin. I think Isaiah is going to have some rounds where he struggles. Realize that he's already won a championship and, you know, maybe even pull out of the year. Maybe just, you know, have some disconnect rides. But I'm going to have to go with Colby Eaglin. I think it's going to be super competitive on the East Coast, though. I think there's going to be multiple winners. And I think it's going to come down to the wire in uh, Salt Lake City. Alright, and that'll do it. Thank you for listening. I probably rambled on for way too long, and I probably said, um, way too many times, but regardless, thanks for listening, guys.